This is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. And I'm here today talking with Vlad. Vlad, how are you doing? Hey, Christian. I'm doing great. And it's Friday. How uh, Friday the 13th, actually. So that's an interesting day. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing pretty great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. It's, uh, it, you know, we actually got snow on the top of our mountains here. So I don't know if the weather has suddenly shifted for you guys up in uh, Montreal. No, it's still pretty hot. It was about 23 Celsius. So that goes to about 70s, low 80s, I think, in Fahrenheit. So it's still doing pretty hot. But I'm kind of envious because uh, I really want to go back to Utah and do some skiing in February, hopefully. February, so. hoping to, yeah, really hoping to get you out here. So we will have that call for speakers pretty soon. But for folks that don't know you, Vlad, why don't you introduce yourself, where you are, who you are, what you do? Sure. So... And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Vlad Catrinescu. I'm a SharePoint MVP from or office apps and servers and services, however they call it nowadays, from Montreal, Canada. Uh, I also create stuff for Pluralsight. So some of you might have heard the voice on Pluralsight. I have about 20 courses on there. Uh, I authored three books, two of them on SharePoint on-prem 2016, 2019, one of them on PowerShell for Office 365. And currently, I work as a product evangelist for an intranet in a box company called Valo Intranet. And you know, one of the things that I love that you do, you and I talked about this uh, a couple of years ago, but it's out on your blog. In fact, I saw the updates that you have for a couple of the courses that are out there. So if you're actually looking for guidance on kind of the latest of the various SharePoint Office 365 related uh, training certifications and things that are out there, uh, Vlad's blog is a tremendous resource for kind of all the classes, other training resources, books, and other reading material. I know you're promoting a lot of your own content, but you're one of the leading people creating the content around a lot of those certification programs. Yeah, but a lot of the lovely. stuff for the certification, most of it, and I really separate into like books, which are of course paid, uh, paid online courses, but there's also a lot of YouTube there, Udemy, and a bunch of links for every single objective that are, of course, free. So there's both free and paid stuff on there. But yeah, of course, uh, if I create the content for some of it, some of it goes to my own content. I'm actually working on a SharePoint Online course for the MS300 right now for a parole site. Uh, so uh, I, I think that's good, of course. If, if I didn't think it was good, I wouldn't be making it. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of free stuff in those certification guides as well. So even if you don't want to pay, there's stuff for everybody. Yeah, I think it's a good site to bookmark for those resources because you're also, as stuff changes, you're, I just like the refreshes on these two things that I saw this week come out to your social. It was just updates with uh, some new resources. So, uh, you know, again, free and paid resources. Yeah. It's just a good guidance on kind of what's out there. So definitely a great site to go and bookmark. Well, well Vlad, so I know you're, we were just talking before we started recording about uh, uh, the global travels and I, I see you all <laughs> over the world at different events. Um, kind of what are you out there talking about? Kind of what's your passion these days? Sure, so uh, lately it's really been about two, well, about one main topic, which is kind of automation but one of them on the end user side and one of them on the administrative side. So on the admin side, it's really been about PowerShell for Office 365. Uh, because really, as a lot of admins move to the cloud and they think that like, yeah, I don't have to do much anymore. I have the admin center. I don't have to deal with PowerShells and things like that. And then Microsoft ships new settings. It was like, oh, you wanna play with this? PowerShell only. It might be there in the admin center in the future, but not anytime soon. So, well, I like there's some some features that that come by default on, and to toggle them off, you have to know the PowerShell. You have to use PowerShell, uh, and there's a lot of them. Most of them only come via PowerShell nowadays, and then a few months later are available in the admin center. But it might be too late at that point. You have to use PowerShell, and even the hub sites. Do you remember when hub sites first got released? You needed to use PowerShell to uh, enable them. It was funny because you had all of those people in the community that don't specialize in IT pro. They do information architecture. They do user adoption. 
And all of a sudden they were forced to like, <laughs> all of a sudden they were forced to like, okay, how do I connect to SharePoint Online using PowerShell? How do I register a site as a hub site? Then they had to look at all those command links. And now you don't have to do it anymore, but as an admin, you absolutely got to master PowerShell to really get full control of your tenants. So. Well, and, and I think the content even is improved uh, by Microsoft and, and from the, the community where you see articles that will go through and, and show you kind of the admin call, console perspective. Even yeah. if you can, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, like keyboard quick keys. If, even if you can do it, you know, uh, through the, the console, you know, here's the PowerShell. Here's the yeah. way to go in and automate and, a lot of those things. Nowadays, it's a bit worse just because Microsoft is in between the old admin center and the new admin center. And not only in SharePoint, but even in Microsoft 365, the main one. So because of that, it's even whereas, yes, well, I'll, I'll take an example that I was talking recently with some uh, in a session, external sharing. In the classic admin center, you have all of the settings, but you don't see all of the modern site collections. In the new admin center, you see all of your sites, but you only have one setting out of 10. So that's where you get to, okay, I have to use PowerShell. There is no other option. And there's quite a few of them like that where you absolutely have no choice. So that's really been it on the admin side. And on the user side, it's been Flow. So uh, Flow has been really fun. I think two years later, or two, almost three years that it got released now, it's really become at a point where enterprises are willing to adopt it. It, it has enough features to really compete for SharePoint Designer in terms of enterprise features. Uh, licensing is still of a mess and I refuse to talk about it. But other than that, it's been, it's been like really what I've been focusing on lately. Well, there's, I think that's a great, uh, uh, you know, well, one, you're covering kind of the latest, the greatest things that are out there, what you know, clients are asking about. I, I think that there's, uh, it's not that the, the, the market is saturated with the rest of like the, the former topics. You know, to it, I think we have a new baseline with collaboration yeah. where, you know, we spent, like I've been in the, the SharePoint ecosystem officially since 2005. It's when I did my first deployment while working for a client back in the old days and, and was deploying <laughs> a project server as well as uh, we started using WSS 2.0. Um, and uh, then I joined Microsoft a year later. Uh, but the new baseline for collaboration where I think because the out of the box office 365 experience is so robust where we don't have the farm admins that we had, there wasn't all of that infrastructural setup just to be able to use those baseline features. You can now just with credit card, go sign up, start using, start consuming that thing, you know, immediately. Uh, it, so I think the, 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 that baseline of activity and our understanding of what's possible is, is risen up and it starts in a different place. So now it's more about, not that there still aren't admin and other basic things to do around collaboration, but now it very much starts at that next layer, which is now how do we add that, those productivity enhancements, the, the, how do we automate more? How do we start integrating across workloads and with our legacy systems? Yeah, and, and that's what I always tell admins is that you still have 40 hours of work that you can do per week. It's just that instead of taking half of them into maintenance and doing updates and making sure that everything still works in the back, you take half of them for change management and making sure that users know what's coming, what's, uh, what is going to be released, how to use the latest features. And the other half, you can focus on cool projects and adding, like you said, integrations, automating things, making the life easier for users. And that, that's what adds the real return on investment on the platform at the end is that last 10% that's specific uh, to the organization. You remember the, the first uh, Ignite conference, so when it got rebranded from in 2015 in Chicago? Yeah, in the Chicago event. So I did a session. It was huge. There must have been like 1,000, 1,200 people in that room, um, which was a, a, I did a bunch of research for and was invited by Microsoft to give this session on uh, like the future role, the future state of the IT pro. And I, I did have a few people in the community that were like, Christian, what are you doing talking about the IT pro? You're not an admin IT pro. It's like, look, I've 
I, I've been in the space, so I know some things <laughs> about it. But you're right. It was I was there as more uh, as a researcher, as a yeah. you know person who that went and I the the content was filled with interviews and surveys and quotes from communities that that are in that space. And by and large, the message from from that because. At that time, 2015, 2014, 2015, you know, there was so much out there like uh, people are just going to lose their jobs. There's no need. Yeah. Oh, the IT pro is going away. And that whole session was people saying again and again and again, saying, no, it doesn't go away. The people that have that subject matter expertise, it is evolving. It's, it's changing, but we can't lose those people. We can't lose that that core knowledge. Oh, oh no. And I really think it's more, it's needed as it was before. You still have the same amount of people that you had before. They're just doing way different things. And they're just doing things that actually add more value to the enterprise than they were doing before. And it, it which is not to say they weren't adding value before. No, no, no. But the yeah, needs, the business changed. Right. Yeah, the, the business changed. And before it just, keeping systems up to date was adding value that just making sure that everything runs was a huge thing for the enterprise but it's kind of remember how uh, intranex maybe four or five years ago like everybody was like oh i want to make sure i have a responsive intranet and that like we kept showing yes this is responsive do you even show that anymore do you even need to specify hey look it's responsive it's something that people expect like they don't even have to think about it they expect right. it to be responsive well so I, so yes for uh, an internet for an organization that's all housed in the same place responsiveness is still an issue when you have geographically dispersed and depending on which regions that you're into and uh, there's yeah. but i but i understand your point i'm just being really nitpicky <laughs> You, you, you know have what to, I mean, don't you? <laughs> well, I mean, so look, I for years, and again, the technology is advanced, and, and broadband uh, is is more broadly you know, used around the world. Where I spent when I got into cloud-based software as a service back in two thousand two thousand one. I mean, WAN optimization and uh, and you had internet back then. Yes. Internet. <laughs> I was like, but I'm saying, but it was, and I was in a, I mean, I, I came, I went to this startup that I worked for where we created this hosted collaboration platform, yeah. not Microsoft technology. Um, but we, we built this back and launched it in 2001. Uh, you know, but the fact that most people didn't have broadband, that was an issue. We found that problem. So we, we spent a lot of time with WAN optimization, which creating uh, edge devices to speed up, uh, you know, the, 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 the experience uh, yeah. and, and minimize communication uh, between locations. And now we have multi-geo, which Microsoft took care of. And if you have enough users, you just enable multi-geo, you have some of it. And with the CDNs, now that you can leverage Microsoft CDN for a lot of the stuff, in a way, yes, there's still IT pros in the back that need to set up a lot of it. But after that, it's a lot easier to set it up. You don't need your own CDN anymore. You don't need to do a lot of those things. It just works way faster. But uh, I definitely think there's still a need for IT pros. And I was even surprised in SharePoint Fest Seattle a few weeks ago, I was doing this getting started with PowerShell for Office 365 session. And I had over 60 people in the room. And I was like, you guys know this is not something new in the power platform, right? It's like PowerShell, it's scripting, it's coding. It's not like a new Power Apps or something. It, but yeah, I, I think people are realizing it that yes, they still need to be technical to be an admin in Office 365. And it, 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 that job hasn't went away at all. And it just changed. It evolved. Right. Like it just said. evolved. It's right. There's a, you want to have the people have that knowledge. I mean, th again, this is something we talked about back in 2014, 2015. It's like, yeah. You need to have people that understand what's happening, you know, between the services. Yeah. Um, and, but I think for a lot of organizations, those folks that may have just been your, your SharePoint farm admin is now your uh, cloud services. It's admin. Teamwork admin is the term. Team, now. Right. But it's more of a global focus that yeah. might be looking at. Uh, you know, telephony and a lot of those, the services on that side of, as well as, so it's, 
I mean, it's still that traditional IT role. Oh, yeah. And actually, Microsoft last year, when they did the new certifications, they did the job task analysis. So what roles do we have in Microsoft 365? And they came up with three of them, really. So you have the teamwork admin that manages Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive for Business, Stream, Yammer, Flow. So really everything that's collaboration, the messaging administrator would manage a lot of the exchange. So what are your mail flow rules, making sure that your email doesn't get tagged as spam, and a lot of the security stuff at the same time. And uh, what is it, the modern desktop. So it, we still have end user devices. So how do we make sure that Windows 10 is deployed and updated? that we have Intune taken care of and that people on their phones, they have apps deployed, their phones are secured and everything like that. So you really have the teamwork messaging and the modern desktop or uh, I think it's modern desktop that you have in the kind of in our space now. And the SharePoint people seem to have taken the most of it under their belt is like, oh, collaboration, SharePoint people, you go. Well, and I think that, and I would even expand that list. I agree with those those three. I say that, uh, and in the messaging, uh, and that could even be fielded by a person who owns on the system sides, uh, security and compliance. So compliance specifically. Yeah. So that messaging person is ensuring that you know those understanding of the policies and make sure that they're applied across all those different systems. But two other roles, though, well, maybe you, you still have that compliance manager that's there, but um, but two other roles I think are, are critical as part of that team in modern IT is one is that that data analyst um, having yeah. that person that is that's only that's like we're doing all this activity we've got all that we're doing all this collaboration but is looking at it from the data standpoint um, and, and if you've worked in the like I years ago was in the data how warehousing world and I spent my days uh, uh, you know, in rooms and meetings with DBAs, like what do you need? What do you need from these different systems? Bringing these things together, modifying reports, building out data marts, uh, you know, kind of all those activities. And then the last one that I think is also critical for for this new, it's part of this. Let's use the phrase digital transformation of of the business. This it actually applies here, though. You're making faces, but you know. <laughs> Um, but the last one is that, um, you know, is that like uh, the, the, say for external facing customer success, but that community manager type role. I think a lot of organizations are also finding that it's critical. They're starting to understand that adoption and engagement isn't just like, hey, we hired somebody, we did training for two weeks, that the ongoing success of all these systems, again, you might have somebody wearing multiple hats and they might have community management of all these collaboration systems in their job description but it's a very distinct role is to make sure that things are being used effectively efficiently that uh, uh you know and, and they're they're maintaining the community yeah, i think it's critical adoption specialist but yeah but it, it really depends on the size of the organization at the end and it, it, i've i've seen organizations where they have a dedicated person for Yammer and organizations where Yammer is turned off completely. So uh, it, depending on the size of the organization and how much usage you get, the, like I think under 5,000 people, it's mostly the admins that take care of that. But Sure. With, it could, hey, for a very small org, all five of those roles could be one person. Yeah. Yeah. And, and too yeah. often it is. And I but, feel, feel bad for that one person. Yes, I meet them often as well. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think the adoption specialist is definitely a role that's needed. And I think Microsoft actually did, they call it a certification, but it's not the real certification in a way because it's the EDX courses that Microsoft is doing. And like after you finish the course, you can pay $99 and you get the certificate that you have completed a training, but it's not really a real Microsoft learning certification, if that makes sense. Right, so and for people that don't know what we're talking about, so at you know, EDX, edX, uh, so there's you know, free courseware out there, which is, I think, hey, it's, it's just good training. Oh yeah, you can take the training for free, actually. Right. You only or you could pay the 99 bucks to get the certification and take yeah. your time and you know, to complete the courses and things that are out there. 
But it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it, I mean, if you remember when uh, the Yammer was acquired and they had the Yammer certification, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and uh, so there's a bit where it's testing your knowledge of the material to, to go through, but yeah. it's not like, hey, I got that job because I have this edX cert certificate that I paid $99 yeah, it, for. It's not like before where you're, if you had that certification, well, it still is today in a way for the real Microsoft learning ones that partners need them to get their gold status. And you need them for this and that. So the, those still, in a way, can make you land a job if somebody needs it or customers request that. We want consultants that have those certifications. Sometimes they never know why they put it in there, but they like putting those requirements in there. I've even well, seen in the it, past. I was trying to explain this to my adult children, you know, that, but uh, uh, one of them who's... Uh, who has is paused on university right now, but I'm saying like, you know, there's a, you know, while ultimately your job path may not depend on those certifications, having that kind of um, education, like having a degree, I mean, it shows that, Hey, look, I was you know consistent. I went and pursued this, this path and I have a certain baseline of knowledge, yeah. you know, for the, for this thing. So uh, the certification, while it may not be, it's not like getting your MCT. It's not like, you know, uh, where you, all these other programs yeah. where you're taking multiple courses, but it shows that you, uh, you've gone through uh, the, the Microsoft, the deployment methodology, the, and, and you, you have that knowledge that you can leverage in the and, role. And I think especially since a lot of people, I know you went, you even got your MBA, if I remember correctly, right? I did an MBA in technology management, a 27 month endeavor. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a long time. But, yeah. but there's a lot of people in, I team, and I mean myself included, that I, I went to university for a bit, but then I realized, yeah, the stuff we learn in university in real life, there's kind of a 15-year gap in what we learn versus what I, and I was still doing consulting, kind of, because, you know, in Quebec, at least, we have, like, high school, then we have college, then we have university. And college and university is completely different things for us. So I did the college, which I did a computer science a technical program at four years, and then you can go to university. But in IT, unless you want to go in machine learning, into data analysis, and a lot of those things, if you want to go into collaboration, you're like, okay, why do I need to learn COBOL and RPG and all of those fun things already? So I think the certifications can fill a good gap into showing that, yes, right. you, you went for something. You, you still want to learn everything even without that university, which in my opinion, in most roles in IT, it's not that needed anymore. Well, and I think that there are so many different uh, certification programs through major universities. Like I've, I've been sure like you do, I get all these emails. There's programs that are in, especially now around, um, uh, you know, business intelligence, uh, data analytics, um, in artificial intelligence, kind of these subject matter you know, areas from MIT, from Harvard, uh, Columbia, so other marketing and strategy related things that I'm interested in, constantly getting those. And you can have just like a, you know, go, go to a, a lower end, a no name university, get that, that basic d degree in computer science or business or whatever that is, but then go do just over the course of your career, get the, do these other certificate programs just to con continually learn and add to knowledge oh yeah and, and like i said for some things like uh, i was looking a bit at like okay what do those people that do like artificial intelligence or machine learning do and that's when you need those university level max and to for the probabilities and all of that that's that's like a place where i'm sure most of them have phds most of the top level people in that space versus if you look in the sharpening community it's like I, I, a lot of people do have those graduate degrees, but you don't really use it. It's not a requirement for no, most it's, people. No, well, it's, yeah, depending on what you're doing. Like, I, I, I think you know this. Like, I, so I was actually accepted into a doctoral program. I was going to go get a, yeah. so I was going to focus in social informatics uh, around collaboration technology. And this was back in 2004, 2005 when I was accepted in. And, and I've delayed my start. I went to work for Microsoft. I lost my placement. <laughs> I didn't go back. But it was always more of a, of a personal thing. And I'm just I'm thinking, yeah, but it would have been so relevant to what's happening now. I mean, I, yeah. So, but 
But having said that, you've been able to, you can still go and build a, you know, a career if you want to teach and, and write books, you know, and that kind of stuff that, look, you could do all that. Uh, I think it does get easier to start out if you've got that PhD behind you. But obviously, there are certain roles where you need to have that, have had that five to seven years of in-depth research yeah. in those topics to have that knowledge and expertise to do what you need to do. But yeah. Yeah. You can well paid. There's not that many of them, and you got well, a lot of max. Yeah. Well. It, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that the other thing I found out. I don't know this is that you know it's uh, relatively easy. There's a lot of programs to go get find uh, funding for those those PhDs. The problem is you know who has the time to give that many years and and uh, you know towards that that work. Oh, yeah. A three year minimum, and I, I, it also depends on where you live. I mean. In a way, for me in Canada, especially like, for example, the MBA, if you look at a good university in Quebec, I can go get my MBA it's a one year or full time or two year part time, and it's going to cost me about 10,000 Canadian dollars. In other places of the world, it's not always that cheap. So it's. I it, wish mine was only 10K. <laughs> I don't want to do any specifics, but in other places of the world, even in other provinces in Canada, you're never going to find it for that cheap. So uh, it's, it's something that you got to plan and see, will it fit? Do you need that to, for the career that you actually want? Because you can always go back. So here we are, we're bashing formal education, but no, that's not what we're saying. <laughs> uh, you know, but the, uh, no, but I, I think you're right. I think, I think we need to, throughout your career, especially in IT, uh, anything okay. related, related to technology, you have to continually add on to that knowledge. You have to continually be out there learning to stay on top because it changes so fast uh, and, and you need to be aware of what's, what's going on and, and be able to adapt. Uh, and, and just like organizations, and you know this from we, going back okay. to change management, organizations that are good at change management, they don't have to be good at any one thing, if, but if they're good at change management, they are going to have a distinct competitive advantage over those that are, that, like most organizations that struggle with change. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I, I think especially with the new generation coming into workforce, it's becoming better and better, and we see a lot of push for change from the bottom rather than the top. So I, I think that even change management will become less of a problem in 10, 15 years from now than it is today. Just because the, remember that 10, 15 years ago, you always had your most valuable technology in the enterprise. You didn't really have access to the latest tech at home. But, but we've really switched when where at home you have access to the latest tech and like performance stuff. And then you go to work and you're like, oh, I got to use this shitty program again. So, so the change will be so much easier because the consumer, the prosumer stuff will always be one level ahead. So when it comes to the enterprise, everybody will be ready to use it. You don't have that, that change, that training problem anymore. Well, that, nobody ever talks about like the positive side of shadow IT, which is driving a lot of that. And, and I mean, all jokes aside, I mean, yeah. dri just what you said, I mean, driving some of the innovative changes be like, look, I can go and get this maybe not yet ready for enterprise solution, but look at what I can do for, with this little app that I purchased for 10 bucks. And I did personally, yes, it's a complete uh, compliance nightmare. <laughs> You know, yeah. from a legal standpoint of our intellectual property sitting in this third party tool, and there's you got to do it in a managed way. But you're right. I mean, a lot of this this prosumer, uh, uh, you know, technology is driving. Hey, you know what? We need to have that within the enterprise. Yeah, and and then like like Trello and then Microsoft Planner. Yeah. <laughs> a good example for it is that Trello has been doing it forever and a lot of people love that style. I know there has been third-party solutions in SharePoint that gave that option to do it for a while, but it, it really, then the big enterprises, you're like, hey, like you said, you need that. 
And, and then the bigger ones start to work on it. And then it becomes enterprise ready with compliance and all of the other, oh, I just hit a glass. Well, that was almost a fun moment to catch on video. Uh, but it yes, makes great, it makes great podcast as well. Oh, you almost spilled something. <laughs> I'll add sound effects later. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, and I think yeah, after that, the big enterprises will see the need and will see that users want it and will invest in that direction. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, hey, Vlad, I mean, this has been a great discussion. I know we're just over time here, but people want to find out more about you and where is that blog anyway, but how do people get in touch with you? Sure. So my Twitter, very easy to spell at Vlad Kachunescu. Uh, luckily, there's not that many well, Vlads doing SharePoint. The tongue, of course, but yeah. yeah. Well, there's not that many people doing SharePoint that are called Vlad. So hopefully if you type in Vlad, I'll be one of the first options there. And if not, I blog at absolute-sharepoint.com. Or again, just Google for my name and I, you should find my information in there. Well, obviously you didn't see the news today with Bing search results improving. We might start saying go Bing the results soon. <laughs> you mean, we already say it, but mostly as a joke. I, I, I we're know. We're going to start saying it for real. I know. Yeah. Anyway, that was a different <laughs> conversation for another day. But uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Vlad, hey, really appreciate the time and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you. There's a couple of events coming up, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely see you at Ignite. So. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me, Christian. Have a great day. Wow.